But when you study fadail, particularly the topic of fadail, or, or the topic of, uh, of things that are uh, blessed and virtuous uh, through hadith, um, there's, there, there are a few rulings. Number one, is it permissible to use weak ahadith when describing the virtues of an action? Is it permissible to use weak ahadith? All right, you guys are gonna have to participate. What do you guys think? Is it permissible? So for example, if there's a weak hadith about the virtue of hajj, is it permissible to use it? It depends. It depends. As long as, there are two conditions. Number one, it's not extremely weak. So it's not fabricated. It doesn't fall into the category of maldur or munkar. Something that is baseless or fabricated. Or la'if jiddan, extremely weak. So that's number one. That it's a slightly weak hadith. And slightly weak would mean that there's a missing chain, but the narrators are still trustworthy. Other than that, maybe that one chain. Um, you know, that, that there's, there's a slight weakness to it, and even if there is not such a small weakness to it, it's just still not an extremely weak hadith. That's number one. So the sanad of it, the chain of it, is not extremely weak. Number two, in regards to the meaning of the hadith, it's important that the hadith does not establish any new action. So for example, if there is a hadith that is weak about the virtue of performing hajj, it's still permissible to use as long as you say it's a weak hadith. So you'll find in the books of Tuskegee, the books of spirituality, they'll do that about Hajj, about Ramadan, about anything. But if there's a hadith that says, for example, if you do Hajj in this year, then it's, it's, it has such and such virtue, then you can't use it because it establishes or it acts as a basis for a new addition, an innovation in the religion. Okay, so I'm not knocking on the entire concept of using weak ahadith for the purpose of falaat.